Just for symmetry, what's the biggest bull story you tell that people believe? I have convinced everyone I know that I'm not ticklish, simply by keeping a straight face when tickled so that they feel silly and stop. Little do they know that if they had continued for 5 more seconds, I would have caved. Same thing between my wife and I, I hope she doesn't see this thread. I've posted this before, but very few people saw it. The lie started in school when I was around 15. We had a few table tennis tables and my mates and I started to play there pretty often. In order to intimidate them as I played them, I lied that I had won a regional table tennis tournament when I was 14, before most of them knew me, and this seemed to work pretty well, and I reminded them pretty often. I wasn't even any good at the game, but my friends seemed to put it down to the fact that I only play well under pressure against other good players, etc. The strange thing is that a guy I have been friendly with since I was really young backed me up on this false truth, as I casually mentioned it while we headed to the tables. This shocked me, as he out of anyone should have known the truth, but set in stone what I had claimed to my other friends. While we were playing one day, one of my friends recounted that I had played in a fairly serious tournament, and that he hadn't done, as an excuse for losing to me. As he stated this, an intrigued pay teacher walked by and started questioning me on this. I wasn't the sportiest of boys at that school. I winged my way through the questions, vaguely matching updates I said with those I told my friends so my cover wasn't blown, and my face ended up on the school hall of fame, with all the other, genuine, regional sports players and victors, even though I had no proof. Even my parents have come to believe this event existed, let alone that I won it. Despite them admitting to having no recollection of the tournament whatsoever, something you would expect them to remember. They occasionally tell distant family members or family friends. 2. To add to the effect, I now play at a semi-pro table tennis club, probably as an indirect result of this lie escalating out of control, and I still use this fact to impress and intimidate my peers. Most of them haven't played much before but want to learn and compete. Not the greatest lie but one that has served me extremely well over the years. TL. DR. Lying a couple of times about winning a table tennis tournament spiraled out of control. I convinced a female classmate that my grandfather was buried in the tomb of the unknown soldier. Yes, you read correctly the tomb of the unknown soldier. She was never the brightest. Had a girl in middle school convinced that Texaco was a state. I once told my friend that my cousin and I used to tie our left wrists together and knife fight with markers like they did in the bad beated Michael Jackson music video. I told him that whoever got marked first was the loser because they got hit with the knife. He thought it was the coolest thing and continues to bring it up from time to time 16 years later. I have never done this. I don't understand why you didn't just do that. It sounds fun. I wasn't the one who told it, it was a rumor that somehow started. When I was in primary school I had surgery to remove blood clots on my brain. When I returned to school everyone granted, they were kids, thought that I had had a brain transplant. I was out of high school for 3 weeks after having surgery and when I got back to school everyone was freaking out when they saw me and whispering as I walked past, until one guy ran across the school ground screaming you're alive and hugged me. Turns out my friends told everyone I had died in an accident and everyone believed them. I say I was a space shuttle tail gunner when people in bars ask me what I did in the military. I then go on for a few minutes about shooting down Chinese Russian satellites and what it's like being based out of Cape Canaveral. FL. When I was in elementary school, I managed to convince a group of people that I was Daniel Radcliffe. That was back when only the first Harry Potter movie was out. I, too pretended to be Daniel Radcliffe in second grade. When I was a freshman in high school my friends started smoking weed. I was really awkward in middle school and I was super excited to have friends but I didn't want to smoke. I was worried that they would think less of me if I told them I didn't smoke so I made up a lie. I told them that I was allergic to weed. Which is ridiculous. You really can't be allergic to the smoke of something. It was believable because I am allergic to a shitload of stuff, including but not limited to things that grow on trees. So my friends didn't think anything of it and eventually they told the rest of the school how they felt bad for me because I couldn't smoke. 
The lie had been going on for a really long time and by the time I was 18 I wanted to try weed but I couldn't because I didn't want to reveal my secret. When I started college I told the one person that was from my high school and going to my college the truth. It turned out I was allergic to weed. It made me extremely sick. Not in the coughing or throw up way but throat closing way. So it was true the entire time. I feel really bad for you. That you'll have to skip straight. Straight. To coke. I once convinced a friend that worms were the tails of tadpoles that fall off when they turn into frogs. We were both 18 at the time. Biology can get pretty funky anyway. When my little brother was in maybe 5th or 6th grade, and let's face it, what 5th grader isn't a chronic liar, he convinced this one particular kid that our entire family was secret agents. We had jetpacks and spy gadgets, and the real reason guests couldn't go to the basement, boldy and also generally uninteresting, was that it connected to an intricate system of secret tunnels leading to all sorts of secret bases. Every single day for months, my brother would tell this kid new stories about our covered crime fighting adventures. That's our family. Then he started talking about me particularly. I was a good 6 years older than him and I think he looked up to me a good deal as the big kid. I also always told him fantastic stories in story format usually, not pretended truths. But anyway, as soon as my brother exhausted the family of secret agents business, he moved on to my sister as a wizard. Our family had saved the country, I defeated dragons. The family had jetpacks, I rode a winged tiger. My family had secret tunnels and bases, I had a tower on top of a mountain. We live in a mountainous area, which was invisible to non-believers. Our house had laser cannons, if you made me mad, I'd turn you into a sheep. My family was cool, I was bad. Fricking. But, I eavesdropped on one or two if these storytelling sessions. The detail and conviction with which he spun these stories were shocking. Not to mention the kid was incredibly naive even for a regular 11 year old. He ate the whole thing up for months. The thing was, the previous year my brother and this friend had stolen a little toy from my room. I think this kid still had it. He stayed away from me, probably out of fear. Eventually his parents contacted ours because they were worried about his mental health, as he was getting really paranoid and apparently thought I could come and extract revenge at any moment. His birthday party came up. He invited me. I didn't go, being 5 years older but arrived to pick my brother up a good half hour early. I sat the poor kid down and told him I had to talk to him about something. Watching him shrivel with fear, sure it was about my toy, was revenge enough for the theft. I then relieved him of his misery, and spent the half hour explaining that he shouldn't believe crazy stories his obnoxious friends told him. He went along with me, but I think he still believed my brother for a really long time after that. They're not really friends anymore. TLDR. Little brother convinced a friend that our family was secret agents and I was a wizard, kid became paranoid and guilt ridden about a previous theft and invited me to his birthday party. Got invited to kids party score 1 for Derpilia. In high school, there was a rumor that I was sleeping with one of my teachers. Seeing that she was one of the better looking teachers, I milked that rumor for all it was worth, about 3 months of being cool. It would have been just absolutely hilarious if she got fired and had her life ruined. Haven't posted this one before, but when I was in high school I got into a fight with one of my friends. Let's call him Jim. Because I was young and immature, I decided to get back at Jim by starting a rumor that he was having sex with his blood sister. Weird, I know. But you had to understand that Jim was one of those kids who was weird enough that it was believable. Plus, his sister was really hot. I just told a few people at first, half joking, but then for some reason, the rumor ignited. As it turned out, Jim was going along with the whole story, claiming that incest was just like gay sex, and that everyone should be tolerant of him. Now, my friend has always been a bit of a narcissist, and apparently, he was of the mentality that all press is good press and that thus, this story would be somehow good for his popularity. So he starts milking the story, bragging about it in fact, just so he would be somewhat popular. And while at first people acted shocked and disgusted about it, after a month or two, people actually began supporting him in this endeavor. A group of kids sprung forward treating him like he was a victim of social oppression. 
and Jim became a sort of martyr. I talked to Jim about the rumor. At this point I half believed the story myself, and he admitted that it was all false, but for his own freaked up reasons, like the reputation he earned as a sister sucker. At the time of this, his sister was going to a community college nearby, and while the rumor was going around, Jim's sister was knocked up. Once news of this got around, the school exploded. Metaphorically, everyone in the school had heard about Jim, the guy who knocked up his sister. For the next few weeks the story was all anyone ever talked about. Some people still supported him, but others despised him for it. Jim was harassed on a daily basis, and received death threats over phone and Facebook. One of the teachers apparently got in trouble for yelling at Jim that he was disgusting and should be ashamed. And within a few weeks, news got around to his sister. Her reaction was priceless and indescribable. She publicly outed her brother as a disgusting little pervert, and at some point her boyfriend came out to give weight to her story and claim responsibility. I forget how he did this, but everyone believed his side of events. When people found out that Jim had not only lied to everyone but had told such a fricked up lie everyone, and I mean everyone despised him after that. Within a month Jim had changed schools to avoid the humiliation. Last I heard of him. He was undergoing therapy. So anyway, my biggest bull's story was that. I don't even have friends. Who could have seen that twist ending? Bullshitting Reddit while reading bull's stories. There is some serious talent here. This is why I read it. Not me, but my sister. When she was 11 or 12, she started using the computer. Mostly she just looked up stuff and cool facts, etc. Eventually she learned quite a bit about Russia, a country she admired. A time came when she convinced her friends, by knowing some Russian words and through Google Translate, that she was from Russia. These people had known her most of her life, and they still bought it. Eventually she told everyone that she was getting deported back to Russia and she wouldn't be seeing them for a while. She timed this perfectly with a visit to her mental center, and, bam, everyone thinks she's gone off to Russia. People still believe it today and she tells people on the internet all the time that she has dual citizenship. TL. DR. Believe everything you read on the internet. In 11th grade, I told the new French teacher that I had gotten shot on the sidelines. I was on dance team, at the previous weekend's football game against our rival school. Her jaw dropped and I continued with some details until the kid sitting next to me chimed in, no one nobody actually got shot. My friend and I were both eating a typical school lunch. I had a pizza and my friend had a salad with bacon bits in it. I decided to tell my friend that the school's bacon bits were condensed pig cream. Pig cream I explained were the fat oils from a pig mixed with butter. Surprisingly my friend believed me and vowed never to eat the school's bacon again. I almost felt bad for convincing my friend to not eat bacon. You monster. We were in this bar in Saigon and this kid comes up. This kid carrying a shoe shine box. And he says shine. Please. Shine I said no. He kept asking. Yeah. And Joey said yeah and I went to get a couple of beers. And the box was wired. And he opened up the box. Freaking blew his body all over the place. And he's laying there. He's freaking screaming. There's pieces of him all over me. Just. Like this. And I'm trying to pull him off. You know, my friend that's all over me, I've got blood and everything and I'm trying to hold him together. I'm putting. The guy's freaking insides keep coming out, and nobody would help. Nobody would help. He's saying, saying I wanna go home. I wanna go home he keeps calling my name. I wanna go home. Johnny, I wanna drive my Chevy I said with what? I can't find your freaking legs. I can't find your legs. You would be surprised at how people react to this. Dang it Frank for the last time you are not Rambo. When I got to my new school in 6th grade people thought that my family was in the Italian mob. Note, in central Michigan there aren't too many people with the last name of Giordano so that's what they all thought and still think to this day. Minus a few of my good friends that is. You should try that trick in growth point. I have a dimple right on my chin. It makes it kind of like a butt chin of sorts. I tell people that I was shot there with a BB gun as a baby. They believe me. And I play it off however long I can keep myself from not laughing. There is this group of kids that live on my block. 
After being confronted about Santa Claus, I decided to just tell them that I was an elf spy. As time progressed, I told them I had shin extensions and plastic surgery to fix my ears. I also own several gadgets which teleport me to and from the North Pole, let me communicate with Santa, and give me the ability to fly. They actually believe. It's gonna be awkward as crap when I see them in two years and they figure out I've been beasting them this whole time. One time in high school, I had been working on some kind of project with a red sharpie and managed to get sharpie ink all over my hands. In one of my classes, a girl looked horrified and asked what happened to my hands. Without missing a beat, I told her I just took a potato peeler and lopped off the skin, all while making hand motions of course. Her and the rest of the class looked horrified. Oh, also the time I convinced my friend I was possessed by a demon in German class. That was pretty entertaining. Please elaborate on the demon thing. That I'm Australian. When I go to parties where I don't know too many people I pull out an Australian accent and make crap up about the country. The public transit system is kangaroos. They have a chlamydia epidemic thanks to people freaking koalas, etc. I think of myself as contributing to American ignorance. My dad and I pretend to be brothers sometimes. He's 50 and I'm 18. It's normally easier to do that than convince them that this guy is actually old enough to be my father. He looks really young and I look kinda older. Alright, my time to shine. So when I was a freshman I was awaiting a huge test coming my way. Determined to get out of it I hatched my second greatest plot of deception ever. Two days before the test I told a friend, quite loudly so others would hear. I wanted to come to his house after school and I would bring pizza and video games and to invite everyone and we would have a party. I never went to his house. And the next day, the day before the test, I skipped school for the first time ever. I always had perfect attendance up to this point. I called the school pretending to be my dad and said an emergency came up and my son wouldn't be coming in today. So the next morning before I head to the bus I get into the first aid kit and grab some gauze, medical tape, a sling, and some other stretchy thing with velcro on it that I thought looked bad but... I broke open some red ballpoint pens and smeared ink on my wrist and hand and bandaged it up like it was a serious wound. I went to school and told my whole class how on my way to my friend's house I was hit by a drunk driver and had a chunk of broken windshield glass embedded into my wrist and had a serious injury. Everyone felt bad and I got out of doing the test. Of course being 15 I didn't plan ahead and for the next month I had to change my bandages and gradually heal from my horrific injury but many assignments were gotten out of. I learned after that to not fake injuries and you only ever cheated one more time after that in my most diabolical plot to date. This guy is actually lying right now. This is the story he tells people and they believe. My god. When I was a junior in high school, my friend and I were at a party a couple towns over. We didn't know anyone there except the host. Ran into one of the hot cheerleaders from our school and chatted it up with her for a minute or two before disappearing back into different corners of the house. The next day at school my friend started a rumor that I nailed the hot cheerleader at the party. I wouldn't admit or deny it when asked, just stating the old I don't kiss and tell. This went on for a while and I was even told that people had asked the cheerleader herself and she said it was true. She later transferred to another school that same year. Never got a chance to ask her why she didn't deny it. She wanted the D. When I was a freshman and I had really bad acne I had to use a cream for my face and it would make my face really dry and peel. One of the kids in class would always make fun of me. So one day I tid up a little bit and told I had a skin disease. I told him later in the day that I was joking but I had him feeling like a complete butthole for a couple hours. I milk my family lineage sometimes. I'm a first generation Filipino American. My dad came from a pretty prestigious family there. My grandmother founded a private university and my grandfather was a province supreme court judge. I like to exaggerate that I'm a little bit of a princess. I think I know you have her. My friend likes to tell everyone that I am really good at rollerblading. I'm forced to keep up with the lie every time she brings it up. Absolutely everyone that hears it ends up saying something along the lines of, Really? I guess you're right. She does look like she would be good at rollerblading it secretly tortures me. I've never been able to rollerblade without falling on my butt. 
I took my friends out to a Chinese buffet once. Afterwards, I asked my gullible friend how he liked the taste of dog. It took a while to convince him, but my other friends quickly jumped on board and backed me up. The look on his face when he was finally convinced was priceless. He actually started to tear up. Sometimes I tell people that I'm 27. I get mistaken for an older person so I can get away with it. Oh god, I know the feeling. I'm 20, but everyone thinks I'm in my 30s, or at best, late 20s. Obviously I'm not saying that old, but it does get a little irritating for people to think I'm lying about my age. Someone once thought my mom was my daughter, she's 50. I tell people that I've met Matt Damon and show them a picture of my best friend with a cardboard cutout of Matt Damon. Works all the time. That same best friend and I pass for twins all the time and no one questions it. People believe this, and it's funny. When I was younger, my mom had started trying to quit smoking. Because of this, she had some very weird cravings. One day, she told me to go get her some pickle juice from the store to help fight the cravings and told me to get something nice for myself as well. So, my friend and I headed off to the nearest store within walking distance. We get there, find some pickles and some candy for the both of us. Since that was all I wanted at the time, as we were standing in line, this old lady in front of us kept looking back at me every now and then. Finally, when she looked back again, I asked her if something was wrong. She said oh, it's nothing, you just really look like my grandson. This being as it may, I shrugged it off, but she wasn't finished speaking. Could you do something for me she asked. I said sure, because I'm a nice guy. When I leave, can you say goodbye grandma? I miss you, I love you grandma. I said sure, but not the I love you part. So, as she walked away, I told her what she told me to say, and she was on her way out. So I get up to the register, scan my items, and the cashiers tells me that the total comes out to $117. Me and my friend are flipping crap at this point, and we demanded to know why it was so much. She said well, your grandmother said you'd be paying for it. Before I knew it my friend was already running out the door after the old woman. I told the cashier to wait a moment and I was soon following my friend. We found the woman right as she was getting into her car. I told her to stop right where she was and she began to quickly get into her car. Before she could close the door, I grabbed it and flung it open. I started to pull on her leg, and now I'm pulling on yours. Oh, the look on people's faces is priceless. I tell people, usually drunk people, a long lavish story about the time I dated a woman in a wheelchair. They'll believe anything if you strike their empathy strings. Wizard's first rule, people will believe a lie because they either want it to be true, or they're afraid it may be true. No wizard's first rule is people are stupid. I have a scar on my forehead right at my hairline about 2 inches long. Whenever anyone asks me how I got it, I tell them that when I was younger my next door neighbor was chopping pine cones off with a hatchet and on one swing the head flew off and got me straight in the forehead I had to be rushed to hospital for bleeding and stitches. The truth, I ran into a door, but they prefer the more sensational story to believe. Honestly, I think half the things posted on Ask Reddit are bulls. Make up a good enough story and upvotes all around. Didn't you hear from the front page? Symmetry has been proven wrong. It's science now B. But seriously once on Xbox Live when I was younger and stupider, I jokingly tried to convince an American that the reason the Sydney Harbour Bridge was so famous was because it connected Britain and Australia. And he believed me. Whenever I'm at parties and meeting new people, I always claim to be a completely different nationality and race than I am. Canadian, Caucasian. It never fails. I'm completely monotone and sarcastic, so people have to either think I'm lying, which I'm good at, so they don't, or that I'm crazy, and I'm also quite convincingly sane. On multiple occasions I have told people I am Asian, and this conversation follows. Them. Oh. I can see that. Which parent? Me. Both. Them. No. Seriously. Me. Seriously. Both. Them. But you don't look that Asian. Me. Oh. Well I'm second generation. Them. Ooh ooh okay I get it now. 
I grew up in the US in a Midwest state and went to college in California. Nearly every person I met didn't know a thing about the state I was from. So I took some liberties in describing my homeland. I mainly wanted to see if they would be believed. The year was 2003. These liberties included, we only got the, the internet one year ago. I love my 14.4 dial up. It's amazing. My family finally got rid of our outhouse after we had indoor plumbing installed 7 years ago. So nice to use a real toilet. I rode a tractor to both elementary and high school. The same tractor that all of my neighbors used to go to our one room schoolhouse. The driver's name was Cletus. People ate it up. I couldn't believe it. They actually thought these things were true. They couldn't believe that someone had grown up like that and actually made it into this particular school. They admired me for my ability to rise above my backwards ways. About 3 weeks later one of them came up to me and said, Hey, I checked it out, and your state has had modern plumbing for like 50 years. Why did you lie to us? Because you were stupid enough to believe it. That has forever been an eye-opening experience about the lack of awareness people have about places they do not know or care about. You know how in some college classes they make you tell everyone what you like to do what your major is etc? I tell everyone I'm a race car driver. I make up all kinds of bulls about how good I am and how I'm basically at the track every weekend. No one has ever questioned this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.